I'm currently working on a project with several parts, all visible. Some are going to have to be thick and strong. Others are going to be thin and translucent. Wall thickness is going to play a critical role on this project. In this video, I'm going to talk about what we can do to get great looking walls that meet the needs of our prints and get our machines pushing plastic. Now, first things first, in most cases, two walls in Cura should be viewed as a minimum, not a default. Now, here's a print I made a few years ago when I first started 3D printing. I didn't quite know what I was doing. If you look real close, you can actually see the infill through the outer walls. Not good. You don't want to see that. Back when I printed this, I was so proud of it. Now I look at it and say to myself, so many flaws. What was I thinking? Anyways, having your wall thickness too thin can make the print more brittle. You can lose print detail. And of course, you can see the infill through the outer walls. Now, my usual go-to count for walls in Cura is three with a total thickness of 1.2 millimeters. The downside to the thicker walls is more material and longer print times. The payoff, stronger print. For example, I printed both of these PLA cups with a 0.2 layer height and a 0.4 line width. This one was printed with just two walls. This one was four. Both were printed on the same printer except for the wall, well, same settings except for the wall thickness. Now, as you can see, when I try to squeeze this one with just two walls, there's quite a bit of flex to it. Now, when I try to squeeze the one with the four walls, there's not much flex to it at all. In fact, it's pretty hard to deform. So, as expected, thicker walls mean stronger prints. But, if it's too thick, there's a chance you'll get blobs and gaps on your print. It might even appear that you're over extruding. So don't go overboard with your wall thickness. You're going to have to find the balance. So how do we change the wall thickness? In Cura, under the wall settings area, there's two settings and they're of interest to us. It's the wall thickness and the wall line count. All right, so what I have going on here right now is my line count is set to two. My wall line width under quality is set to 0.4 millimeters. So 0.4 times two is 0.8. And that's what we see for the wall thickness. But you'll notice in this case, the wall thickness is grayed out because Cura is doing the math. Wall line count times wall line width. Now, if I come in and I change the wall line count to four and re-slice, you'll notice that it's still not changing the wall line thickness variable. It doesn't matter. Cura is taking the wall line count multiplied by the wall line width. 4 times 0.4 millimeters is going to give us 1.6 millimeters. Now what we can do is come in, this little symbol here, the F with the X, it's a formula. And that's all it's telling you. So if we, now we cleared the formula, and I go up to the wall thickness, and you'll notice our wall line count is currently 2. When I change this 0.8 to 1.6, it changes our wall count to 4. So if you're designing and you know you want a specific wall thickness, like the actual measurement, enter it in the wall thickness. If you're just printing and you say to yourself, well, this looks like it might need 4 walls, use the line count. Either way works. They work the same. If I change my line count here to 5, we're going to get five lines, but we're still going to be showing the 1.6. Now I can hit the FX and change these both back to the previous values. And now we're back to 0.8 and, point, or 0.8 and 2. And that's all there is to it. Now, if I downloaded something from Printables or Thingiverse, 
I'm usually going to use three walls at 0.4 millimeters. If it's something that's just going to sit around, that's what I'm going to use. But now, if it's something I'm designing or it's going to be functional, I put a lot more thought into my wall thickness and line count. Also, consider the size of the model you're printing. Larger models like thicker walls for structural purposes. Now, another curious setting I want to talk about is wall ordering. The options are inside to outside or outside to inside. In other words, print the inner walls first or print the outer walls first. If you're printing something that is functional and requires some degree of precision, then you'll want to set your wall ordering to outside to inside. Since the outer wall is put down first, any extra filament extruded after the outer walls will be pushed inward away from the outer walls. The downside is the surface may be less smooth and overhangs are more likely to fail since it has nothing to build upon. Now, on the other hand, if you're printing a model that doesn't require any degree of dimensional accuracy like Albert here, I don't think anyone's going to measure his head and say, oh, it's out of spec. Print the inner walls first, otherwise you can get some blemishes like here under the nose, under the chin, any place where there's an overhang. So remember, when precision is needed, print the outer walls first, otherwise print the inner walls first. Now, I know somebody out there, yeah, I'm talking about you, Stephen Cleveland, is thinking, Print the inner walls first, and then use horizontal expansion to correct the outer dimensions. That's a good idea if you want your print to look good and maintain precision. Just remember to do test prints first to determine what value you're going to need for the horizontal expansion. You don't have to print the whole model, just enough to get the information you need. Now, another setting that you can put to good use is optimize wall printing order. It's a checkbox that you can turn on or off to let Cura determine the order that walls are printed. Cura does its best to evaluate your model and reduce the number of moves and retraction by printing walls around the same part after one another. By reducing the number of travels and retractions, print time is reduced. Not by much, but it is reduced. For example, here we see the print movements for a flange with the optimized wall printing order turned off and you'll notice that it prints the inner walls of all the holes first, then moving on to print the outer walls of each hole. Now, with the optimized wall printing order enabled, you'll see that it prints the inner wall of a single hole first, then prints the outer wall of that same hole before moving on to the next hole where it does the same thing. Print the inner wall first, then the outer wall, then it moves on. This reduces the number of travel moves and retractions. Now, while this usually provides positive results, it does have its drawbacks. First, it increases the amount of time required to slice the model. Firstly, I can live with that. Now, it can also have an impact on dimensional accuracy because the previous wall hasn't cooled enough before the next line to it is being laid down. Another thing is Cura allows different flow rates for the inner and the outer walls. If these two values are set far apart, using optimized wall printing order can result in blobs on your models. Give it a try. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Now, one more setting I want to mention is alternate extra wall. I like this one. With this enabled, Cura will add an extra wall every other layer. So let's, if your wall line count is set to three, on the even numbered layers, two, four, six, three walls are printed. But on the odd numbered layers, one, three, five, and so on, an extra wall is added for a total of four lines, four, four walls on those layers. This adds extra strength to the print because the infill is getting wedged vertically between the layers. It also increases the bonding between the infill and the walls. Now, obviously, this is going to increase print time, but only 
about half as much as if you added a full extra wall. Now, one last thing I want to bring up. If you're printing PLA, PLA Plus, PLA Pro, you want your parts cooling fan on 100%, except for the first couple of layers. If you haven't done it yet, go to the cooling section in Cura and make the setting for initial fan speed visible and set it to 0.0%. This is going to give us a better build plate adhesion. Now, the fan will gradually work its way up to the speed you have entered in your fan speed setting. When I'm printing PLA, I turn my fan setting to 100% and I get better looking and stronger walls by doing it. Experiment with these settings, do some test prints, and see how you can apply them to your projects. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and let me know about it down below in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Be your own hero, live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing.